Hey, it's Mark Podolsky at LandGeek, your favorite niche real estate website, thelandgeek.com. And on this week's roundtable podcast, we have almost all the usual suspects. We've got the Zen master, breathe in the mailing, breathe out the marketing. Mike Zeno. Mike, how are you? I'm doing wonderful. Thank you for asking. You're, you're welcome. It's good to see you. Your partner in crime, the nightcap duo, dude buddy, the nightcap OG, Scott Bossman. Scott, how are you? I'm great, Mark. Thanks. Good to be here. Good to see you. We've got Taria putting in the reps, Harris. Taria Harris, how are things in Atlanta? It is peachy down here. Oh, did you guys get that see joke? I, see what I did there? I, 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 I got it. <laughs> it was really good. Uh, it's good. It's good. <laughs> we got the technician, Eric Peterson. Eric, how are things in the Valley of Ribs and Southern Fried Chicken? These are good. Uh, school's letting out this week. Kids are in exams. So, I mean, it's almost the start of summer. And I'm happy to have almost everybody back on today's roundtable. Yeah, yeah. And, of course, last but not least, Tate. I love it when you call me Big Papa, Litchfield. And, you know, we didn't want to – Tate and I could actually do a whole roundtable on the latest J. Cole album. But we're not because we're unselfish like that. Well, I mean, maybe we could do it for a bonus episode or something like that, but that wouldn't require a listening party. And I, th I, th I think next week everyone needs to listen to the latest album and then we can go and discuss it. And we want to know your five favorite bars. J. Cole. Right, we want to know what you were. Yeah, J. Cole. Right. Who is this? J. Cole. Oh, you guys Who's actually playing? How, how old are you guys? <laughs> Jeez. <even. laughs> well, look, in all fairness, if it weren't for my. My kids, I would not know J. Cole. True. But let's segue into actual land investing roundtable, shall we? Let's do it. We have an interesting discussion. Tay, what's, what's on your mind this week? It's on uh, maybe not as much my mind, but it is on the mind of uh, some of the people that we get to work with closely in our coaching program. And the question is, are you still buying? Everybody knows that this market is a little bit wild right now and things are hot. And so the question that I'd like to ask all of the coaches here on the call is, are you still buying despite seeing price increases in areas? I mean, are you, you know, pumping the brakes? Are you saying not for me? I'm waiting this one out. Are, are you guys still continuing to buy as much land as you can possibly get your hands on? That's it. Plain and simple. And, and is, is it fair to say the fear, not fair, fear is inflation. Yeah, absolutely. I think that uh, is on people's mind, right? It's all over the news. Everything you turn on, you know, you're going to read about the inflation being the silent killer of your money and things of that nature. So is anybody afraid of that? And if so, what are you doing to combat it? Uh, just this morning, we saw people talking about Bitcoin and um, accepting it as a form of payment for your for your properties. So I just want to know, what's everybody's thoughts on this? Are you buying? Are you doing anything to combat inflation? Or are you just increasing your prices? What are you doing, guys? All right, well. Who are we starting you know, with, Mark? I, I know the Zen Master thinks we, we should start with him because we're creatures of habit, but he's shaking his head. I think we should start off with Dude Buddy. Nightcap OG, Scott Bossman. I'm not afraid. I think I'm going right. to do, be do better with these on. Um, yeah, we're, uh, we're still buying uh, for sure. I think uh, we, we laid out more capital for land the first quarter of this year than we ever have. Uh, land is still in high demand. Our price is going up. Yes. Have we had to strategize a little differently regarding offers and that type of thing? Yes. Uh, but land is still selling. And I think people really value uh, land. You know, it's a hard asset. It's it's of limited supply. They're not going to print more land. Uh, and I think it's a, you know, it's a valuable thing to put in your asset column. So uh, we are continuing to buy. We are continuing to sell. We had a, we had a really, uh, we, had, we had a needle moving sale this week, uh, which is just awesome uh, for cash. And it's uh it's been a good year so far 
Wait, wait a second. Let's just rewind. When you say needle moving sail, I'm going to have to hold on. I'm going to have to hold on to something. Just tell us. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, when you, when you buy now, th this is, you know, really puts things in perspective. I, on these deals, I think about where I was six years ago and, um, I still, um, I still get kind of, uh, excited about it. Right. When I'm able to buy a property for $6,000 and sell it for $20,500 cash. I mean, that's a, that's a needle mover in my business. And mm -hmm. uh, that's going to buy a few hockey sticks for my, for my kids uh, <laughs> and baseball equipment and whatnot. So don't, don't say, uh, don't say hockey around tape, please. We're, this whole, we're going to, this whole, this whole podcast is going to go off the rails as soon as you say that. Now we're going to hear about the playoffs. Yeah. So no, no. It, anyway, on. it, it's, it's been a great year for land so far. We continue to buy. We continue to, land continues to be in high demand. Okay. Well, congrats on the sale. I mean, that, that is, you know, and it's all, it puts all things in perspective, right? Because like that sale for Eric would pay for lunch yeah. in, in Franklin. But for most people, that's, that moves the needle. But it, it's, you know, it's, it's all perspective for sure. <laughs> So, um, Mike liked that little dig. It, <laughs> but now, Mike, we have to go to you. <laughs> I'm just digging. Those of you who are listening to us don't realize we all have sunglasses on today. I know some of you may be listening in your car or something. I don't know. But we all got sunglasses, so it's sort of a different vibe. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how many people watch us or listen to us, Mark, so I don't know. Yeah, I, I think it's it's that's a, that's a good point to to to, to point out. It's an, we're, it's we're, we're all like a little different today. Look, yeah. we we needed to mix it up a little bit, right? It brought some new energy into the uh, group here, and um, I wish Scott Todd here he probably would have his aviators on, right? And uh, that would be uh, looking pretty cool and sharp. So, Mark, we're still buying property. We have dozens of properties we're buying right now. Uh, the business model works just the same. Yeah, maybe maybe uh, some people are experiencing a little bit of difficulty buying property, but I think that those who really know the model, know how to morph their offer uh, prices, know how to twist their areas slightly, stay in the same counties, but maybe look at a slightly different area, you know, there's things you can do to adjust. And so we've done that and uh, we're still buying property pretty much 25 cents on the dollar and we're buying a bunch of it. So I have not made any adjustments at this point and um, don't have anything in the foreseeable future. But, you know, if things change, I'll change with it. I think we can always, we're buying these things so, uh, so right. We're buying them so right that we have a lot of uh, wiggle room. Okay. Okay. Sharia, what are your thoughts? So not only are we still buying, but we're buying as much as we possibly can. Um, we did see an uptick in pricing, uh, but we kind of rode it up and continue to get accepted offers. So I think one thing that I am, I've am i been encouraging some of my coaching clients is when they don't see the offers coming back, like don't just keep mailing at that same price, right? Let's make some adjustments. So we've made the appropriate adjustments and we may have to continue adjusting, but we're willing to because even if we have to pay a little bit more for the property, then we just charge a little bit more. So it's not like because we're having to pay more, we're losing money. We're still making the same margins. So if you, like Mike said, if you continue to follow the philosophy, regardless to what you pay for it, um, you'll still make money. You're not going to lose money, but we are still buying for sure. Yeah. And your return's still going to be, you know, Scott Bossman type of margins. Right? Needle moving. Like needle moving <laughs> 300 to 1,000%. <laughs> Let's brag to our neighbors no. margins, no. right? Not that yeah. Scott was, Scott, you weren't bragging. I, I didn't mean that as a dig. I really didn't. I, I was saying like, and, like, and that's the thing, like, you know, there is a certain amount of, you know, we can't like in, in the real world, we can't even talk about our margins. Like no one's going to get it really. Um, right. You know, and, and we have humility in the Lange community. I mean, you know, cause you, how many people you've talked to like, yeah, I bought Tesla last year. It's up 720%. Yeah. 
right? Well, now what is it doing? So, you know, you're playing that volatility game where we know we're making money on the buy and we have this underlying asset that won't go to zero and isn't subject to the whims of a tweet or, you know, or anything like that. So, um, so Scott, I hope you didn't take that as, as a shot. Sometimes it's, it no. can sound like a shot. No, I, and I don't, if I did come across that way, I hope I didn't, but I, I no, you, you, you didn't, it's, you didn't. It's the sunglasses. He looks like he's bringing braggadocious yeah. because of those sunglasses. Yeah, right. it just, it's just swag. He swagged out. No swag. Um, I get excited when I talk about it. I want other people to discover this model because I mean, that's a, it's a game changer. It's a game changer. No, it's true. I, and I, and I'm, I, I just, I get just as excited. I probably get more excited now when you guys close deals or clients close deals than when I close a deal. Um, but it wasn't always that way. Uh, you know, really early in the beginning, I'm like, oh my gosh, Jeff Axton paid what for that property? He's making what? I'm like, I got to redo my offers. And he's like, yeah, I'm Ock. It was just luck. I'm like, yeah, I'm tracked by that expertise. It's crazy. Those, those are some old, old days. Um, the technician. Eric Peterson, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, we're we're absolutely still buying land. Um, there's no doubt that that we have to pay more for land in this market. But on the flip side, we can sell it for more than we used to sell that same property for. Um, I would even say that we can get more down, um, more money up front, so that we're recouping our capital faster in some cases. Um, I think, you know, from my perspective, what I'm seeing with our buyers, what I'm seeing with our sellers, people in general kind of feel like they have more money right now and they're willing to, to spend it on land, at least the ones that are buying land from us are, and, um, they have a little bit more capital to invest. So if we ask for more money up front, they're willing to do it to lock up that property. Um, you know, on the on the note of inflation, I think that it I understand the concern. And there's, I suppose, some strategies for someone that's super concerned about that that you know you could look into. And and I, I think one of those strategies would be looking at you know different forms of crypto and, and finding ways to accept that. Now, um, right now. GeekPay and other systems aren't built out to support the, collecting those payments with that kind of currency. Right However, now, but we're working on it. Right. So that's that's key right now. But um, if you want to do it, you know, kind of in a more manual basis, there's there's no reason you can't do that. And if you believe in that over the dollar or you believe in something else over the dollar, you know, I mean get creative and accept payment in different ways if, if you want to go that route or convert your payments as they come in into whatever that other monetary, you know, holding solution is. So, um, you know, I, I think owning land in the end is, um, is a great place to be. Uh, it's like Scott said, it's a hard asset and it's something that's tangible. Um, the government might try to print more land, but they can't. So, um, you know, I like it, and I'm gonna I'm gonna keep buying it and keep selling it. Yeah, I mean, I think you, you bring up a really interesting economic fact. In an inflationary environment, people always want to buy assets that are fixed, that have that have a fixed, uh, you know, unit. There's there's only so much land. There's only so much gold. There's only so much silver. There's only so much Bitcoin, which is why Bitcoin, I think, is a is an excellent digital store of value if people believe that story, enough people believe that story, and it doesn't get legislated out, which I think it, it, it's moving so fast. I don't, I don't imagine that could actually happen. It could happen in the United States, but I think there'll be, you know, a country like Mauritius that just says, okay, we're the Bitcoin country and, you know, come here for your Bitcoin. So there's, I, you know, there's certain intrinsic things that we can buy. We just happen to be playing in one of those 
playgrounds where we have this fixed asset and it is a traditional inflation hedge. But to Tate's point, the fear is that we're buying high. Could we get to a point where we have to sell low? We're on the, you know, we, we're, we're buying at the wrong end of the market and there's going to be a severe correction a la 2000, let's say eight, which actually for me was 2010. And then what do we do? So Tate, I'm going to give that to you, our resident economist. Well, thank you. Yeah, I uh, studied this heavily during my time at uh, at Oxford and Harvard and Stanford. So you guys can trust me for this sound, sound financial advice. But no, just kidding. Um, what I would say is in what I'm noticing, real estate in this market is really moving one direction and one direction only, right? And yeah, we might see a little kind of hiccups throughout the, throughout the, you know, data over many, many years. But I don't think that a property you buy today at 2021 pricing is going to be worth significantly less in 2023. I just don't see it happening. Why? There is a newfound love for raw land, for hard assets, right? People trust this more than they would fiat currencies right now. And I don't see that stopping. So Am I buying? Yeah, we're buying, honestly, hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of land every single month. And we are selling just as much land. We are buying anything and everything that we can get our hands on because I keep reminding myself and the team that, hey, this is 25 cents on the dollar, 20 cents on the dollar. If inflation goes up, I'm comfortable with my margins. They're juicy. And as you know, everybody else has mentioned today, we've increased our pricing to deal with an increase in demand. That's that's basic economics, right? So the greater the demand, the lower the supply, the higher the price. And that's what we're experiencing today. There are some areas where we pump the brakes a little bit. Um, we're not buying as much because I haven't quite seen an uptick in pricing for those areas to justify the added cost of acquiring land out there. But I think it'll come. I just think we got to wait for everybody to sell out their really, really cheap land first. And then when that when that's all gone, the only way the the only direction for the market to move is up. I mean, that's just the way it's going to be. And I think it's going to continue to be that way. I've got properties that we sold in January of this year that if the buyer were to default on, I could sell them for 25 percent more. And right. I could do it in an, in an instant. We had a guy default this week uh, on a $41,000 note. And it's a lot. It, it hurt. It was a big monthly payment. Uh, $780 a month was the monthly payment. And, uh, you know, the team was a little upset. We reposted the property. And that same property, based on today's market value, is going to produce $1,000 a month now and be sold for closer to $65,000 in terms. So... It's okay. It's all good, baby. It's, it's all a good, good it, baby, it, it, baby. It's 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 a good problem to have. I, and I I think you you bring up a good point is the ratios. So right. even if we're 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 buying higher, we're selling higher. But let's just play this out as a worst case scenario. Okay. Okay. So we buy high, the market turns on us. Okay. But in the meantime, if as long as it didn't turn on us the next day. Right. Let's say it turned to us three months from now, six months from now. Each month that that person's making their no payment, our cost basis is going down. So if they do default, well, we would just adjust our pricing. We're still locked in at a tremendous yield and a tremendous margin. Yeah. The other thing is, Mark, if you have a 2008 event happen, sure, you're going to have some of your note portfolio fall off. We'd be lying if we said you wouldn't. That's okay. Why is that okay? Because what you're going to do is you're going to resell those properties at an adjusted monthly payment. That doesn't mean that the overall sales price is going to drop a ton either. I mean, I've seen properties uh, in your portfolio that you were selling, you know, in 2006 for six grand, the market corrected, and you went from getting uh, $125 a month to $70 a month, but for the same price. So in the end, 
it all works out. It really does. So I'm not worried. And that's what I tell, you know, our coaching students right now is buy, buy as much as you can get your hands on you. The key to this market and what we're seeing is control. You've got to control as many properties as you can, as you can. And whether that means from direct mailers, from wholesaling properties, from buying on land arbitrage, whatever it is, control as much land as you possibly can, because once you own 15 or 20 parcels, something magical happens. And that's the floodgates get opened and you will become inundated with except with potential buyers, basically. So that's the that's my takeaway from all of this craziness and and enjoy it, too. Right. And if you don't feel good on a deal, nothing wrong with passing. Right. Make your offers. If you get too many accepted. You don't have to buy them or, or you can wholesale them. Right. Right. It's fine. Um, you know, it made me think of the, the very beginning of the conversation today. We said, you know, people have this fear. They're reading the newspaper. They're watching the news. I don't know. I guess the newspaper is not really a, a thing anybody does anymore, but they're reading online and they're watching the news and there's this, you know, everyone's talking about inflation, inflation, inflation. Um, and then so I kind of talked about in the My Networks group, I do these Monday meditations. I said, I, you know, I've, I've been doing a, a news fast and I couldn't tell you what's going on in the world. And someone posted in there uh, this great Mark Twain quote said, if you don't read the newspaper, you're uninformed. If you read the newspaper, you are misinformed. I love that. Very good. No, but I think that's that's a pretty good example. I mean, everybody, you know, the people that have gone through flight school, listening to this podcast, coaching clients, they know how to, they should know how to pivot in this kind of a market, right? The business model has remained the same, pivot. And this is what Mike talked about, right? Yeah, you might have to pay a little bit more. Oh, you run out of money? You know how to creatively fund your deals without having a ton of capital, right? We know how to pivot. We know how to adjust. And if you're buying at 25 cents on the dollar, even if it's more than what you think you should be paying, but the market is saying it's 25 cents on the dollar, I guarantee that there's somebody else there, somebody out there who would give you 35 cents on the dollar for that asset. Guaranteed. Exactly. I mean, yeah, the, the margin of safety is is really where we're making our money for sure. So I thought this was a good topic, but now we're at that point where we're going to ask Taria for the tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something else actionable for the art of passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. However, we have to give some love to our sponsor this week, Flight School. Learn how the next 16 weeks can literally change your life. Have Scott Todd be your Sherpa, take you up that mountain of land investing quickly, safely, efficiently. And he's done it thousands of times, not hundreds of times, thousands of times. So Scott, Mike, I know people are like, well, what's the tuition, the tuition, the tuition for flight school? It ain't going to cost you nothing. Nothing. We guarantee it. You're going to make that, that money 180 days or less in cash or terms deals. So learn more, go to landgeek.com forward slash training, get on a call with the Zen master or the nightcap OG and see if this model resonates with you. All right, Taria Harris, <laughs> what is your tip of the week? So my tip of the week is actually a tip that I gave during boot camp. So for those that were in boot camp, they may have heard it. But um, what a couple of my coaching students just over the last two weeks have been asking me about are these Facebook pictures. So you're marketing your properties on Facebook and Facebook is a free platform, a great place to market. But it's there's some nuances there. How many pictures do I need to post? What if I run out of pictures? How do I navigate all the pictures? So um, two tips. One, one is to. Uh, go out to Google and maybe Google your county and find pictures of the area. When you're posting on Facebook, you don't necessarily have to have pictures of the actual property. I mean, that works, but you can also post pictures of the area. As long as you are clear in your um, in the body of your ad that, you know, these pictures may be pictures of the area and not necessarily of the property. So I've had students that would not market because they did not have pictures. And so now you have this property that's kind of sitting on the shelf. 
So go out, be creative, find pictures of the area and post. Just be honest in the post about where you got the pictures from. Yeah, I love that. But back in the day, I, I would take pictures of the general area because it all looked the same to me. Mm-hmm. And um, I would have my buyers actually go out and do due diligence for me. So I had the, the, the guarantee. <laughs> Send me pictures back. Send, send me pictures. Our like, buyers. Yeah, send us pictures back. Yeah, it works great. It works great. Um, Eric, what do you think? Good tip? I love it. As long as they're not stealing my pictures. No, you don't <laughs> steal pictures. You get pictures of the general area. Don't go rip off other people's pictures. And they can't. You put a logo on yours. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, I really think this has been a great... Uh, We'll call it the sunglasses episode. And, um, you know, we all have real sunglasses on except for one of us. And they'll have to figure that out on their own. And you have to figure that out. Put, so put in the comments on YouTube, which among us doesn't have real sunglasses on? And, uh, you know, whoever has the best sunglasses comment, uh, I'll give you, I'll send you out a, uh, a signed copy of Dirt Rich. So leave us a comment nice. in YouTube. Best comment, uh, funniest comment. The best comment wins. West, yeah, not the meanest comment, you YouTube people. Be nice, yeah. be kind. We are humans. So, you we get have feelings. Say, we are humans. Yeah, exa- exactly. Um, by the way, Trio, you know what's so funny? I was just thinking, you know how, how people name... Uh, Dennis tend to be dentists. You know, land, 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 no Landons <laughs> seem to be more into land. We have a lot of Landons in our. I group. cracked that joke years. <laughs> I cracked that joke a long time ago, Mark. <laughs> I, I, I honestly, I am I stealing it? Well, I'll give it to Tate then. I'm sorry. No, oh, I mean you can me. have it. I'm just saying, like I'm sure you plant. I'm sure you planted that in my head, maybe. Landon, years ago. right? Like land, Landon. Yeah, I mean it was destined, but yeah, you can have it. I think you weren't on that call. That was on office hours or something. But yeah, okay. Maybe you listened. All right. He is killing it with a name okay. like that. You're destined to succeed. I love it. Yeah, I mean, did that ever come up, Trio? Like when you guys were talking about the different models. You know, I told him it came up. We were trying to figure out a name for our business several times. Landon's <laughs> land. Like, yeah, yeah, just land name it Landon. Land, land, land on land. land. <laughs> Ooh, I like that. Land on land. I, it's not bad. Wait, how much do you like it, Tate? You want to race for to, to buy the domain? <laughs> the domain. I, I know you've got that tab open already. You That's like your hobby, isn't it? I like know. buying domain names. It's like. I think you own Tate, Tate Litchfield, dot, you know, dot com. I bought, I bought, I bought all your names. Exactly. It's, it's, only, it's the only leverage I have. Smart. For sure. <laughs> Scott Todd must have beat you to um, it. Well, you probably had scotttodd.com, not net. I, well, of course. Of course. Didn't think about the dot net. So um, I want to thank the listeners, by the way, for putting up with our shenanigans. And, uh, if you would, the best compliment you can give us is if you just, just threw three little favors. You got to follow us, uh, rate, review the podcast, send us a screenshot of that review, support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 wholetailing course, how to double your money 30 days or less. All right. Are we ready to do this? Yep. One, two, three. Let freedom ring. ring. Not bad. Not bad. So, uh, Eric, I have to ask you, are you going big now on Bitcoin? It's taking a little dip. Are you, is, are, you, are you buying or are you waiting? I'm holding right now. You're holding. You're, not, mm-hmm. you're certainly not selling. No. But you're not, you're not buying. Not at the Eric's, moment. I've got, Eric. I've got a decent amount of holdings. <laughs> So we're not going to put any more in that pot right now. You could buy a whole lot of ribs right now. <laughs> that guy doesn't have paper hands. You can tell by those sunglasses. Diamond That's hands right. over there. Diamond hands. But I, I'd, I'd say it's a good time to buy if you've got some money to invest. 
Okay. I like it. You like it? Um, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm waiting for another dip. But I think it's interesting that like, Tria, are you buying any crypto? Yeah, I have Bitcoin and Doge. And Doge. A couple Tr other Tate? ones my son recommends, but I don't know the names of those. Yeah. And by the way, if you're listening to this little bonus part, this is not financial advice. Do not do what we do. Do your own research. Where it's literally the like I wouldn't say the blind leading the blind, but like because Eric probably does know what he's doing, but I don't think that any of us maybe besides Eric know. I mean Tria, do you know much no. more? No. No, hey. not at all. Uh, yeah, I'll just take the I don't know what I'm talking about route on this one for sure. <laughs> Scott Bossman. Uh, I don't know what I'm talking about either, but I, I bought a little Ethereum this year. Okay. So so we're all sort of riding this crypto train. I think it's interesting because I think it's a nice compliment to what we do because we, we all sort of believe in this, this asset class that is just a fixed asset class it's digital land if you will mm -hmm. um i still if i had to choose which one i'd go big on i mean clearly land but this isn't this isn't such a bad hedge either um and it's exciting and you feel more cutting edge and let's face it when you go to a party because i guess there will be parties again you tell people you invest in land, they immediately, their eyes immediately glaze over. But if you're like, oh, I just bought some Bitcoin and Ethereum and Dogecoin, they're like, oh, tell me, explain, really? How, how do you do that? You start talking about Coinbase and treasure wallets and you sound cool. And then, <laughs> you know, I don't know. Maybe I'm just have that story in my head. It could just be me. Tate, what about you? No, do, yeah. do your hip friends talk about this stuff? Yeah, I think this is a, you know, like the younger generation, they believe in it. And I think that's all you need, right? If enough people believe in it and support the cause, I, I still think it's very early, really. Uh, I think you should own some. I'll leave it at that. But uh, which one, what coin you want to put your money in, you got to figure that out understand the fundamentals, understand how it works and be prepared for a roller coaster because 25 to 40% swings is just what you're signing up for. That's, that's normal. So I do think that, um, uh, it could become a, and you know, some countries standard at some point. So who knows? They do yeah, really I cool mean, stuff. I, no, like the blockchain is awesome. Once you, once you understand well, what it does, that's sweet. That that's the thing, and that's that's sort of the the hidden component component. Like the the right. I think talking about these certain coins and seeing the value of them are sexy. But what's really sexy is the democratization of everything. I mean, if you know, if you're a title company right now, whew, I start looking for another job, title officers. <laughs> then smart contracts are coming. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you, I mean, you know, if you take that all the way down that, that chain and on the blockchain and you have trust, you don't need a middleman for anything anymore. It's, it's pretty exciting if, when you take that, that whole story out, we could do a whole round table on trust and blockchain and how it could go, you know, bad, but or just I think the more, YouTube the more people, tr but what, what's cool about it is like the more that people actually try to break it, it becomes more anti-fragile each each day as as it gets to get smarter and you know, people are like, oh, there's a hole. Now we plug that hole. So I don't know. Eric Peterson, you want the last word on the blockchain? Not really. <laughs> He's too cool <laughs> even for the blockchain. He's too cool for the blockchain. If you're not um, you know looking into at least understanding the concept of cryptocurrencies. Um, I think you should at least do some research and, and look into it. I'm not going to say you should put your money in it or anything like that, but um, I think there's strong potential that in the future, we're going to be living in a world where that has an impact on our lives. So, Yeah. If you had one resource you would send people to just to understand the basics of 
blockchain and cryptocurrency? Is there is there somewhere you would send people to read about? Man, I, I think just like learning about land, go listen to podcasts, you know? Um, you're going to learn a lot through, you know, doing that. Okay. There you go. Is there, do you have a favorite podcast? Mm, no, I listen to a few, but I don't necessarily have a favorite. Yeah. Is anyone dropping it on Clubhouse these days? Is anyone listening to anything on Clubhouse? Tria? No. That's a no for Clubhouse? Mm -hmm. Tate? I know you sent me the invite and I downloaded the app. <laughs> That's a no. Scott yeah, Bossman, right any, anything on Clubhouse? I tuned in one day when you were on there. Uh, otherwise, uh, no, I haven't really been on there much. Mike Zano, have you thought about Clubhouse? J just jumping on, listening to a random conversation about something interesting? No, you do at the firehouse. I don't do the Clubhouse. <laughs> you get the fire. You get the firehouse. At the Similar. Clubhouse. Yeah. Lots of random conversations. <laughs> right. and, and for a whole different yeah. app for that. Yeah, and for those of you still with us, um, maybe email Mike about getting a new mic. What? Mike yeah. needs a new mic. Test, 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 test. That was it's, the boom. Oh, it's, it's terrible. It's, it's terrible. terrible. What's going on with your mic, man? Can't see it. Huh? <laughs> 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 I don't know see it. Now, now you can't see this. He's, he's changing his sunglasses. He couldn't see with the sunglasses on. This is the best That's mic crazy. out there. I don't understand. It was the best mic out there. You're, you're sibling, sibling. Something's off. I don't know if it's your gain, but it looks like I may need to fly out to Boston, make some adjustments, get some kibby. Raw kibby. Raw. Okay. Now, now that was way too loud. All right. Horrible. On that. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Art of Passive Income podcast. Start your journey at www.thelandgeek.com and www.scotttodd.net. Rate and review the podcast and email support at thelandgeek.com. Your screenshot for a free passive income launch kit.